Hi there, and welcome to La Terrasse. I'm Christopher Watkin, author, university lecturer, and researcher in modern and contemporary European philosophy. And this is the gas from La Terrasse. It's your open invitation to pull up a chair, order yourself your favorite drink, and think together with me about life, culture, and French philosophy. This episode is an audio version of a blog post that I wrote on the 9th of April this year, the fifth in a series of reflections about the current COVID-19 epidemic in the light of Albert Camus' The Plague, which I've been rereading over the past weeks. The post is called Pandemics, the Phenomenology of Statistics and the Numerical Sublime. I hope you enjoy it. There's been much talk over the past weeks of COVID-19 being a, quote, invisible enemy. Now, setting aside the war metaphor for a moment, it's still illuminating to reflect on the ways in which we make pandemics visible. In La Peste, figures and statistics play an important role in giving the microscopic plague a tangible presence. The numbers make visible the scale of what otherwise would remain inapparent to any individual on the ground. For primary health workers at the moment, the sensory experience of individual cases of COVID-19 must be utterly overwhelming. But nevertheless, none of us, not even those health workers treating patients, none of us have an experiential sense of the overall scale of the virus. For a sense of the pandemic's scope, we have to turn to statistics. However, these statistics shape not only our understanding of COVID-19, but also our experience of being in the world at this time. Uh, They shape our relationships with other people, and even our mood from day to day. Our experience is shaped by numbers in what we could call a phenomenology of statistics. The existence of the plague creeps up on Dr. Rieu in La Peste, largely through the statistics collected by Taru. Rieu sees individual patients, of course, but his sense of the broader extent of the outbreak is mediated by statistics. Les chiffres de Taru, writes Camus, étaient exacts. Et le Dr. Rieu, on savait quelque chose. Taru's figures were correct. Dr. Rieu was only too well aware of the serious turn that things had taken. Rieu's attempts to come to terms with the extent of the plague are filtered then through statistics. Il essayait de rassembler dans son esprit ce qu'il savait de cette maladie. Des chiffres flottaient dans sa mémoire et il se disait que la trentaine de grandes pestes que l'histoire a connues avait fait près de 100 millions de morts. He tried to recall what he had read about the disease. Figures floated across his memory and he recalled that some 30 or so great plagues known to history had accounted for nearly 100 million deaths. The problem, as Rieu well understands, is in mediating between this statistical reality, what we might call this numerical sublime, and an intuition of the reality that it quantifies. And so Camus writes, Mais qu'est-ce que son million de morts? Quand on fait la guerre, c'est à peine si on sait déjà ce que c'est qu'un mort. Et puisque un mort n'a de poids que si on l'a vu mort, son million de cadavres semés à travers l'histoire ne sont qu'une fumée dans l'imagination. But what are a hundred million deaths? When one has served in a war, one hardly knows what a dead man is after a while. And since a dead man has no substance unless one has actually seen him dead, a hundred million corpses broadcast through history are no more than a puff of smoke in the imagination. So a death is only a death, then, if you've seen it, he amuses. And while statistics surely do bring us face to face with something what they don't bring us face to face with is death itself. 
They bring us face to face, perhaps, with the impossibility of coming face to face with death. They're a marker of our ignorance, a trace of something of 10 million deaths indeed, uh, something that will always remain beyond our personal experience. And in this sense, they take on a mystical dimension. They're signposts of an inaccessible beyond of our pandemic experience, in the same way that gazing up at a handful of starry specks in the night sky reminds us of our inability to understand and come to terms with the vastness of the universe and its billions upon billions upon billions of unimaginably massive balls of gas. This is something, if you like, like a, a negative statistics uh, to set alongside negative theology. It's a mathematical statisticism that performs the same function as a religious mysticism. Statistics then become our link to an intangible but supremely important reality, like the battle plan in a command room compared to the fog and confusion of the battlefield spreading before our eyes an expression of the whole that, absent this mathematical representation, we can only experience in small part. In La Peste, we see statistics taking on something of a prophetic role. Le docteur revit un très grand avec son voisin Cotard. L'employé brandissait une feuille de papier. « Les chiffres montrent, docteur, » annonçait-il, « onze morts en quarante-huit heures. » Grand, who was waving a sheet of paper, was accompanied by his neighbour Cotard. « The figures are going up, doctor. Eleven deaths in forty-eight hours. Uh, » These numbers carry messages from this reality called, quote-unquote, « the truth » that is always beyond our immediate experience, but that shapes and controls I've experienced reality. In one exquisite exchange in the novel, Camus captures the simultaneously objective and evocative reality of statistics, that their, their blend of quantity and imagination. Rien décidé de téléphoner au préfet. Les mesures sont insuffisantes. J'ai les chiffres, dit le préfet. Ils sont en effet inquiétants. Ils sont plus qu'inquiétants. Ils sont clairs. Je vais demander des ordres au gouvernement général. Ria raccrocha devant Castel. Des ordres. Il faudrait de l'imagination. Et les sérums Nous arriverons dans la semaine. Ria decided to ring up the prefect. Now, the regulations don't go anywhere near far enough. Ah, yes, the prefect replied. I've seen the statistics and, as you say, they are most perturbing. They are more than perturbing, they're conclusive. Well, I'll ask for government orders. When Ria next met Castel, the prefect's remark was still rankling. Orders, he said scornfully, when what's needed is imagination. Any news of the serum? It'll come next week. So clarity and worry, serums and imagination, are both inseparable in the statistical phenomenology of plague. And the French philosopher Michel Serre perhaps would call these realities cold and hot. The cold reality of science that can articulate generalised trends and relationships, and the hot reality of the arts that can give expression to individual human suffering. Now, the cold without heat is inhuman, but the heat without cold is parochial. Statistics, furthermore, give an illusion of exactitude and therefore a measure of control. Why do I say illusion of exactitude? Because, first of all, there's a time lag between the events and their statistical reporting. Death rates for a given day are revised upwards in the days that follow as more reports come in. The effects of measures taken to throttle the spread of the virus become visible in statistics only weeks or even a month after they're taken. The time lag is not the only statistical imprecision. We count, do we not, confirmed cases, not actual cases. Yeah, how many asymptomatic carriers pass under the radar of the statistics? It, it, it's impossible to tell. It seems 
that we need to give our invisible parasite a body and an identity. And that no doubt is part of the reason that we reach for the metaphor of war. There's comfort in having a foe with evil intent. One knows what one is up against. A foe has a plan that can be deciphered. A foe can be outmoved. A foe can be vanquished. Indeed, La Peste has been criticised for using a viral metaphor to explore Nazism and the Nazi occupation. Viruses, it's argued, are natural. They're not intentionally malevolent. What's more, it's impossible completely to wipe them out. Unlike National Socialism, they're not evil. But the desire that we're seeing in the media and among some politicians today to make the virus into a malevolent foe also accounts in part why some have called COVID-19 the uh, Wuhan virus or the Chinese virus. Now, there are, of course, additional problematic reasons for using those names. But China and Wuhan are comprehensible on a human scale. They allow us to assimilate the invisible virus into our existing categories of struggle and prejudice, taming its invisibility somewhat. It's the same instinct that leads us to compare incomprehensible areas of land to, for example, the size of Wales or the size of a football pitch. And this, in fact, is exactly the sort of comparison that Rie himself attempts in order to come to terms with the intangibility of death. Le docteur se souvenait de la peste de Constantinople, qui, selon Procope, avait fait dix mille victimes en un jour. Dix mille morts font cinq fois le public d'un grand cinéma. Voilà ce qu'il faudrait faire. The doctor remembered the plague at Constantinople that, according to Procopius, caused ten thousand deaths in a single day. Ten thousand dead made about five times the audience of a biggish cinema. Yes, that was how it should be done. In view of the mathematical light shed by statistics on an otherwise invisible situation, we might do well to reflect on the long philosophical history of the reality of numbers, the geometrical and the mathematical in relation to the world that we apprehend with our senses. The canonical reference here is Plato in the Republic, who considers the geometrical reality accessed through the intellect to be more real than the deceptive and changing universe of our senses. Today, we're being asked to adopt something of a platonic perspective on the pandemic. Don't trust what you see with your eyes or what your intuition tells you, which is that hardly anyone that you know personally has got the virus or it seems fine to go out and meet with people. What could possibly be the problem with that? But instead, trust the numbers represented visually in that famous curve that we've all come to recognise, that we need to flatten. And trust the mediators of those numbers, the scientists with their data. Isolated in your platonic caves, in your individual houses in which you're locked down, don't believe the shadows on the wall, but trust the radiant light of the government briefing that beams its noonday statistics into your cavern, complete with curves of varying degrees of flatness. Now, one interesting feature of the unfolding COVID-19 narrative is that the differences in scientific opinion that are usually reserved for the pages of academic journals are being aired in public and made more apparent to lay people than usual. We see changing advice, should we wear face masks in public or shouldn't we? And we see different protocols in different countries, all of which are professing to follow, quote unquote, the data or, quote unquote, the scientists. But that's taking us away from the subject of this post, and I'll reserve further thoughts on that topic for another time. Thank you for listening to this episode of The Gas from La Terrasse. You can head over to iTunes, Google Play or Spotify to subscribe or rate or leave a review. You can also find more content related to my research, writing and blogging over at ChristopherWatkin.com. Until next time, take care.